got to do is uh, scale out. So what does scale out mean? You got to do some kind of parallel processing. And people tried all kinds of things over the years. Different architectures, different ways to connect different computers, different machines. And this is just an interesting graph that shows you different uh, the types of architectures people tried. MPP is still very popular. All the scientific computing uh, that is done is primarily with MPP, this massively parallel processors. So things like Titan and Sequoia and all these exotic names that you've heard of that are uh, used mostly in national labs and things like that. But if you, uh, and a lot of them died out. People tried different things and they failed. But uh, there se seems to be only two left, and the most uh, dominant one now, you see that growing trend around 2000, uh, you see this growth and what's what are cl uh, clusters, commodity clusters, right? And why around 2000 or early 2000? It had to do basically with Google. Because Google was pretty much, they, they didn't have a lot of money when they started out, so they said, well, let's take cheap computers, hook them together, and see what happens. It kind of worked. It kind of went public, they kind of made a lot of money, and you kind of heard of them, right? So it, it, uh, that's what's happened. So for the, in the big data space, that dominates. There's still the MPP space, which has to do with floating point computation, a lot of data exchange, a slightly different problem. So clusters don't necessarily work well in those cases, uh, in all of those cases, but uh, they, they, they solve a large class problem. Okay. So uh, you heard about Hadoop. I mentioned that. What was it? It's open source project. You guys are well aware of it. Uh, it you know, it, it was a paper written by, and it was based on a paper written by, by Google, right? Google originated a lot of these ideas. They said, we've got some really good technology, and we've got some really better technology. So we'll tell you about the good stuff. So they wrote a paper and told everybody about that. And the really good stuff, they're not telling anybody about. And they'll tell you that in a few years, right? So uh, who, uh, there was a guy by the name of Doug Cutting who was working at Yahoo, and he read that paper, and he says, oh, I could do this. I could write that code. Called up his buddy Mike, you know, and they started writing this open source nutch, you know, sor op um, search engine, which was just uh, because in addition to this paper about MapReduce, Google also published a paper on uh, PageRank, right, the internals of how their search engine works. So uh, Doug and Mike, really, they were trying to build a search engine, but at the in the process, they developed Hadoop, which is... Uh, the same thing as uh, the infrastructure that works inside of uh, inside of Google. So they turned it into open source platform, and there's two big parts to it. Uh, uh, primarily, there's HDFS. How many of you guys are Hadoop people? All right, about a third. How many of you guys uh, just heard about Hadoop? Right. How many of you guys never heard of Hadoop? All right. Okay. So the, you guys know about it, right? So the two big things, and there's of course the MapReduce API, which is the parallel processing, right? Okay. So that's great. All right, so Hadoop is parallel processing. We can use multiple machines, multiple cores, commodity for machines, and um, uh, achieve high performance, uh, and it worked well. It served a l solved a large class of problems. Not all problems, but a large class of problems. Uh, because it was just based on a simple concept, divide and conquer. That's it, divide and conquer. Well, pretty much every parallel al algorithm is divide and conquer. Building the ancient pyramids uh, at Giza, that's divide and conquer, right? They had 20,000 people. They would e everybody would move a few blocks, and they had a few more people move a few blocks, and eventually you have a pyramid, right? Um, so if you think about it, map and reduce, they're like divide and conquer effectively, right? So it sounds simple, uh, but it turns out it's not perfect. Uh, the, uh, and probably Hadoop is probably the first sort of large-scale parallel processing engine that everybody could get their head around that worked well and easy to write, easy to implement for the most part. But it's uh, got this big I.O. bound to it, right? If you notice, there's always, every time you go through a MapReduce job, there's a big read phase, right? Read all the data into the mapper, then write it all back to HDFS, then read it all back into the reproducer, and write it all back to HDFS. So there's four read-write cycles that, that, that occur during every um, MapReduce uh, job. And actually, there's more in there, because there's a sort and shuffle that goes on in between that's more multiple read-write phases. So it turns out that it, that I.O. cost is expensive. It takes, uh, it, it takes a lot of time. Uh, so it becomes largely I.O. bound, right? And iterative, if you have an iterative algorithm, it's even harder, right? You've got to read, read the data, write it out, read the data, write it out. So you're really I.O. bound. So it just doesn't work very well for, for iterative problems. But Hadoop's really good for batch problems. There's a lot of batch problems that, that are out there, and, and it, it works okay for that. People have tried different uh, techniques with Hadoop, there, there are things like Hama and so on, and eh, it's better, but, uh, and streaming is something they didn't even think about, because they, they, one, they weren't even trying to build Hadoop when they came up with it. It was a side product, right? Uh, so these big data problems, since it's big data, they tend to be I.O. bound. You've got to read a lot of data. So I'll give you a couple of numbers. This is a rough ballpark number. If you buy a typical hard drive, you go to Micro Center and buy a hard drive, it's, the data rate is about 100 megabytes a second, read rate, or write rate, okay? 
So if you have a map only job, you gotta read the data and you gotta write the data. So now you're down to 50 megabytes a second per hard drive, okay? If you would do a map reduce job, you gotta do another read and write. So at best, the best you're gonna do is around 25 megabytes per second per hard drive, right? So, and then there's shuffle and sort, and you know, and that takes even more time, and so on. So it, you're, and I've run these numbers on our production clusters we have at, at FINRA, and that's about what it comes out to. So you could estimate the number of hard drives you've got, the amount of data you have, do some simple math, that's about as how fast it's gonna be, okay? So that's a problem. If you have an iterative algorithm, it could take a long, long time. And uh, in the past, we never worried about it, but now you gotta worry about it, because it just, it's not so easy to scale things. And of course, this assumes that your data is in uniformly distributed and a lot of other factors as well, that all your mappers and reducers are working equally well and all kinds of things like that, right? So those are some limitations, batch-oriented. But I'll tell you the other, what I think is the bigger weakness of, of uh, MapReduce and Hadoop in general. Has anybody ever looked at the source code for Hadoop? Anyone? A few people? Do you like it? You don't like it, great. I heard a no, anyone? You kind of like it? Okay, you're the odd one out. No one, so we can say the majority of people either don't like it or don't know about it. And I'll say, I can't stand it, all right? I'll tell you why, because there's, we've all written code that isn't great. We've all written code, you know, just before happy hour, right? Okay, you had to get it out, it's gotta go into production, and you gotta meet your buddies. A lot of this code feel, it looks like it was written during happy hour. <laughs> I'm serious, I'm not, I'm not criticizing Doug Cutting or Mike or any of these guys. I'm sure they're great guys. Unfortunately, this is not their best work. I think they were under time pressures. They were really not trying to develop Hadoop as a product individually. They were just trying to work on something and they, they hacked it out effectively, in my opinion. And the quality's not good. It just isn't. It's really hard to follow. There are just, there's really not much object orientation to it. Uh, it's not very divided very well. You'll find methods that are, you know, you typically want to have a method that fits within a page, right? That's a typical figure of merit. You want to have a method that's more, not more than 100 lines or something like that. There are methods of thousands of lines. There are static methods all over the place. Every week I'm dealing with this distributed cache problem. Has anybody got distributed cache to work right? No, again, no. See, you even like Hadoop and you can't get it to work, right? <laughs> right? So yeah, it's a pain. It's, it's horrible, it's horrible. It's so bad that, you know, of course, this is very diplomatic. This is the diplomatic way of saying this, and I, of course, I'm being recorded, so I'm trying to be nice about it. <laughs> the, Mike Olson, right, CR, so Chief Strategist Caldera, what does he say? He says. Map, you know, he says he talks about technical debt, right? So the code they wrote, right? It, they just, they wrote it during happy hour. They, it was not great, but now we're paying for that technical debt. Means that you gotta spend a lot of time to figure out a lot of the problems in it. Deal with all kinds of crazy configuration, horrible bugs, undocumented features, APIs that, are, that, that don't work, that are deprecated, all kinds of things. So he says uh, very nicely, MapReduce is in arrears, you know? That's a nice way of saying, okay? It, that's just the way it is, that's just the way it is. And I don't think they meant for it to be that way, I think it could be better, and one of my primary reasons getting away from MapReduce is I, wa wanting to get into Spark is I just couldn't stand MapReduce, I just couldn't stand it. You know, it's just, I still deal with it, I do it every day, but it drives me up the wall. Okay, so I stumbled into Spark, again, stumbling, that's my career is all about stumbling, right? So I stumbled into Spark, and a lot of that had to do with the book, because my buddy Samir, he's like, look, can, can you help me with this book? And I was like, dude, I wrote books before, it's a lot of work. I don't want to do it. He's like, oh, come on, man, it's, uh, just help me out. Just help me out, just write, just, just, just one chapter. Okay, wait. how about two? Uh, can, can, how many can you write? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, what do you want me to do? Hey, check out this Spark thing. You know, and then I got into it, I was like, Samir, this Spark thing is awesome. <laughs> it is totally cool. It is, and a large part of it is that I could look at the source code and I could understand it. I could understand what it was doing. I could understand how it worked. I could modify it. I could download it. I could build it. I could run it. Anybody built Hadoop? Was it easy? No. Hours. Hours. Anybody else? Days. Days. Windows. Yeah, even Windows. <laughs> can it even be done? Oh, so you say it can be done? I, you can. Visual Studio and a lot of incantations and whatever. And Okay, yeah, it's pain. I've run Spark on Windows, on Mac, on uh, Linux, you name it. I've built it on all the platforms. You know, it, it's, it's, the quality is substantially better. So, you know, and these guys that were doing it, they thought about the problem because it wasn't really a happy hour discussion, right? 
they were working on a real problem. So they came up with it and they, they said, let's try and Im improve upon some of the ideas of MapReduce, take away some of the things that aren't so good about it and make it better. So they quote all these great things. It's 10 times, 100 times performance. It's gonna do everything. You know, it solves all problems, it's great. Well, yeah, the, the, the reality is if you have an I.O. bound problem, you have an I.O. bound problem, right? If you've got X number of hard drives and you've got X amount of data, you're gonna read that data, it's gonna take a certain amount of time. Where it gets that benefit really is an iterative algorithm where you're not reading the data off the drive all the time, where you're iterating on the data in memory, where that's where you get that 100 times performance. So if you have a typical batch problem that's done in MapReduce, you may not see so much gain. If you have an iterative problem, like uh, any kind of machine learning, you're gonna, get, you're gonna see a lot of performance gain, a lot of performance gain, okay? So there's a bunch of other stuff, you know, there's the Spark Core. Fortunately, it runs on top of Hadoop, so it uses HDFS, interoperable, and all that stuff. You guys know about that, right? Okay, uh, all right, let me talk a little bit about the internals, all right? Okay, so there is this thing called this RDB. So in, in MapReduce, you guys know about, there's, uh, you know, the mapper and the reducer, that's sort of their abstraction. And really, the object they're working on inside of MapReduce is uh, a block, right? A block is typically 64 or 128 megabytes, right? So that block is read in by the mapper, it goes through the map phase where you can, uh, you know, you take, turn into keys and values, and then it goes, gets sorted, shuffled, and goes and reduces it, right? So that's the abstraction. So in, uh, in, in Spark is this RDB. So it's a, uh, think of it as a simple read-only collection. It's like an array list. It's effectively, that's what it is. It's really like an iterator, right? And uh, the nice part is it could be either in memory or it could be on disk. So if it's in memory, obviously you can you reuse intermediate results. In the case of MapReduce, you can't do that. It, there's no concept of having things in memory. You can kind of do that in MapReduce. You'd have to use distributed cache, which we've talked about as a horrible abstraction. It's painful to use, but it doesn't manage it very well. So um, Spark you know, manages much better and does a be much better job of dealing with the memory for you. And uh, the other nice thing is that it has many, many, many more functions than just map and reduce. Hadoop is primarily those two things, map and reduce, right? Well, it turns out uh, Spark obviously has map, but it also has, and it has reduce, and uh, has a whole bunch of others, group by key, sample, union, join, filter, all kinds of things, anything you can think of. And it turns out adding more of these features is really not that hard. It turns out to be very easy. So if you have something you wanna add, another, operator, another transformation you want to add to it, it's actually not hard at all. And I'll show you how to, how, how to go about it. In fact, I've done it myself. And, and, and I proposed uh, some, uh, some capabilities to it. I added it and I contributed it and whatever. And, uh, they, and it turned out that there was a number of other changes that had to go on internally in, in, uh, inside the API. So uh, I'm still putting that together. I'm still trying to add that, uh, add that capability. So it's all written in Scala. Why? Uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of it has to do with performance reasons. They wanted to use a JVM language.